I'm a, I'm a fine arts photographer whose practice primarily revolves around working with an archive or, or multiple archives. Um, as a whole, my practice explores the relationship between photography, text and the object. Uh, usually traditional research sort of connects photography to truth and representation. But what I'm interested in is sort of photography's ability to subvert and complicate people's idea of truth and reality. Um, so by doing so, I use my sort of photographic work to, to walk the lines between, between truth and, and fiction. Um, specifically looking at my, at my current body of work, um, I'm working less photographically with a camera and, and focusing my attention particularly to one, um, one archive as the body of work itself. Uh, I was recently fortunate enough to discover an old trunk um, containing hundreds of images. Uh, whilst whilst cataloguing its content, I, I soon realized the majority of the trunk didn't contain original images. Um, it actually contained sort of multitudes of of scanned copies and, and remakes, so there was doubles and triples of, of copies of the one original image. Um, so inspired by these sort of reoccurring themes and motifs throughout the archive, um, this body of work explores the, the reproduction and the, the preservation of, of the photographic image. At the moment, um, my, my research is heavily process-based, so since a lot of my work revolves around collecting imagery, actually like sourcing the photos and the archive is, is sort of the most important and, and first step to developing bodies of work. Um, for my current project I'm working on, the, the archive itself is my main point of research, I'd say. Um, spending time with cataloging its content, um, I begin to sort of connect these dots and and almost, I guess, construct a portrait of the person who, who once previously owned the archive before I did. Um, I, I almost think of this sort of research as, as like detective work is the sort of best way I would describe it. Um, although the content sort of varies in subject matter, uh, the images I've chosen to work with, they're very particular and they play an important role as a jump off point to developing the sort of work that leads after that um, and developing the sort of narrative that I that I can see in these images um, as well as physically engaging and working with the archive itself I'm constantly researching artists and photographers especially those who work with archives and photo books because I think archives and photo books are very similar as they as they both involve the arrangement and, and sequencing of images or, or objects. Uh, over the past few years, when I've sort of started to begin to develop a more solid process of working, um, I found that collaboration is one of the most like helpful ways in, in resolving problems surrounding my work at the time. Um, having friends who are, who are equally interested in photography, I feel is, is extremely beneficial when it comes to questioning and developing the work um, as well as sort of asking them for opinions I, I start to make sure I don't like I don't overthink my ideas as it's easy to sort of get get carried away and like forcing an idea or a concept um, especially when sort of working with an archive of this size um, I find it helpful to sort of step away from the work and come back, you know, two or three days later um, with a fresh mind. Um, also, I sort of, I tend to, you know, if I'm stuck on an idea, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the house and go explore new areas and photograph these areas. So it doesn't only help with sort of taking my mind off a problem at the time, but I also can sort of add to developing bodies of work at the same time. Experimentation is, is a big part of working with an archive, especially, especially of this size. Um, collating and choosing specific images to work with is the, it's the first stage of the experimentation process for me. Um, so to do so, I, 
I surround myself within the archive and and begin to categorize its content into into like respected categories. Um, by by doing so, I feel more engaged with my work and it allows me to see relationships between certain images that I that I wouldn't normally see if it was you know computer or like screen based. Um, so from there, I I begin to sort of uh, analyze smaller details in the imagery such as like colors imperfections uh, and the subject matter um, so the first and most important part of the experimentation process is then how I I begin to physically alter the images and, and, and collage them um, and sort of begin to recontextualize their original meaning um, so to do so Typically, this involves me scanning the original um, image from the archive, reprinting it, and and physically altering the images with you know scalpels, tearing, cutting, and pasting. A very like hands-on um, engagement with the work. Um, my current sort of studio uh, situation is is my house. Um, this is where. I feel the most comfortable, uh, my room is where I work out of and this sort of sits closest to the front of my house which, which welcomes a lot of natural light onto my desk area which I, which I feel you know, is, very, is very inviting. Um, the environment I, I work in is very important to me and I'm usually, I'm usually easily distracted in other environments where there's lots of people or it's, you know, it's too noisy. So. My room is sort of the perfect space to to focus on the work I need to do at the time. Uh, I, I enjoy working in a in a creative environment. So generally, there'll be music playing in my room. I'm I'm surrounded by paintings, um, my art equipment, books, um, and and other past works of mine. Um, I work a lot from my laptop to to edit images. However, like I said before, uh, I, when it comes to Sequencing images and working with a large archive, I prefer to do so to like do it physically and and sit amongst um, my work rather than rather than on a screen. Um, working from home, sort of, yeah, it allows me to do these things and I have my own space to to do so.